All right then, gang, so we've kind of done the sign-up process in the this data, when we click sign-up, is sent to the server in a post request. We handle that by hashing the password, first of all, then saving the user to a database. Once that's successfully done, we create a JSON web token, put it in a cookie, and send it to the user, and that's what we have right here every time we sign up. So it's automatically logging us in by giving us this JWT. Now, at the minute, that concept doesn't really mean much because we're not doing anything with this JSON web token beyond this. Ultimately, this is going to get sent to the server for every request that we make to a different page or something like that, and we can verify that later on. But for now, let's just move on and handle the errors on the front end over here because sometimes if we enter in something like Yoshi at which isn't a valid email and a password which is you know four characters long then there are errors and we handled those errors on the server we can take a look at that we have this function right here so up here this is where all of the errors are handled we create this errors object and then ultimately we send that back to the user as JSON Okay, so we need to see if in the response we get either these errors, in which case we need to show them to the user, or if we get this user property in the response, that means it's a success and we can then maybe redirect them to the home page instead of showing any kind of errors. So I hope that makes sense. That's what we're going to do. So over here, we get the results when we make this fetch request and we can check this result to see what's inside it. So we can say, first of all, that const data is equal to the response dot JSON. So this response right here, to get the data out of it, we need to use the JSON method. Now this in itself is asynchronous, so we're gonna say await in front of it right there. And then this data will be the object that we send back over here, either this thing or this thing, all right? So now we can check inside that data object. First of all, I'm just going to log it to the console, console.log data. Now then, if I go to the front end now and refresh, first of all, to catch those changes, if I try to sign up with something like Luigi at google.com, that user shouldn't exist yet, and test one, two, this should work, and we should get back the user ID inside the response. So let's sign up, and yep, we get that user ID right here. So that was a success. Now, what if I try to sign up with the same user again? Well, let's try it. Uh, this time we get errors. So that email is already registered. And for the password, it should be empty because this is still fine. Now, again, I could say something like Luigi, which isn't a valid email. And it says right here, please enter a valid email. If I take two off the password, we should get a password error as well. And that says minimum password length is six characters. So... When there's an error, we're getting those errors back. When it's a success, we're getting the user back. So we can check for the presence of this errors property. And if there is an error, we can do something. So let us now down here say if, and then data dot errors. So if that exists, it's gonna be truthy and we'll do something. And what do we want to do in here? We want to output the errors and we want to output them in this field if there's an email error and this one if there's a password. So first of all, we need to grab those from the DOM. So let me say const email error, we'll call this, and set it equal to documents.querySelector. And we want the dot email dot error class. So that's grabbing this div right here. Now I'm going to duplicate that and this time I'm going to call it password error. And this time we want the password error div. All right, so we've got both of those now. And if there's errors, we just want to populate that. We want to change the text content of each one. So I'm going to say that the email error div dot text content is equal to the data that we get back dot errors because we know we have that errors property now because we did a new check dot email now that email property and the password property are always going to exist sometimes it might be empty like this but it's always going to exist if it is empty it's basically just going to update the content to be an empty string so therefore we're not showing any kind of error if there is an error in there then it's going to update it with the error itself okay now i want to do the same thing for the password so let me say password error as well dot text content and set that equal to data dot errors dot password 
and that's all there is to it. Okay, now I also want to reset the errors every time that we submit so that if we get an error, for example, and in fact, let me demo this, let me demo it. So if I refresh over here and I type in Luigi and just one, two, three right here, if I sign up, we get those errors now, right? They're being populated with whatever is on this errors object. Now, if I update this to be something valid and press sign up again, while that request is going on, I don't want to show this error anymore. So I want to clear out the errors every time we click sign up. And then if we get errors back, we can populate them again. So let's clear them out every time we submit the form, which is up here. So I'm going to say right here, reset errors. And then underneath that, I'm going to paste this in. And I'm just going to change this to be an empty string for each one. And that's all I'm going to do. So we're taking out the current errors every time we click submit. All right. So that's that sorted. If there's errors, we show them. Now then, let's try this by saying Luigi at google.com. In fact, we need to refresh first of all. I'm going to say Luigi right here and one, two, three. Get those errors. Now, if we try to update this to something that's valid, then we can sign up again. And notice this one now goes. All right. So I can say right here instead, test one, two, three and sign up. And actually this email is already registered. So let's say Luigi one at google.com and sign up. And now it's valid and we get this user back. Awesome. Okay. So now what we can do is instead of detecting the errors, we can detect if there's a user property. And if there is, we can redirect them to the homepage after they've signed up. So let us do that below this if check right here. And I'm going to say if and inside parentheses data dot user. So we're checking for the presence of that user property now. And we can say location dot assign. This is how we can redirect from the front end. And we're going to say to just forward slash. So that will do a redirect to just forward slash and it will request a home page from the server. So let's give this a whirl again. I'm going to change this to, in fact, we need to refresh to catch the changes. Then I'll do toad at google.com and test one, two, three and sign up. And yet we get redirected to the home page. Awesome. All right then. So everything is kind of working now for the sign up process. Next, we're going to turn our attention to the login screen.